hello and welcome to another lesson in our vba programming and in this lesson we're going to go ahead and create an amazing form like this in vba it's going to be very simple all these labels and text boxes you see on the screen here i just drag and drop we just drag and drop them write edit and write the codes behind them just to make them work and be able to collect our data and store them in our database in excel it's going to be very simple fun and straightforward okay so that is that now if you haven't watched our previous tutorials we have the links in the video description below you can just check the link and then have access to the previous tutorials follow from the lesson one to the last lesson that is how you'll be able to understand everything so now and also if you haven't subscribed to our channel please do that subscribe press the bell icon so that you can receive notifications anytime we upload new tutorials now let's quickly delve right into these lessons thank you Hello and welcome to another lesson in our VBA training and in this lesson we're going to start working with VBA user forms that is using the VBA tools so let's quickly dive right into that so we go straight to our VBA training folder we create a new project right click go to new Microsoft Excel so we will press the enter key to launch it so let's just go to file, go to save us, choose VBA training folder, make sure you choose macro enabled and name it project now. Effects, save it and close this now. Let's delete this one. So we can then open this and start working with this one. Okay. So why don't we name this as a, our database? that is where the data is going to be stored okay perfect <clears throat> so alt f11 open our code editor so we're going to work with the user form so to start with we go to insert and choose user form okay so we just manipulate it based on the size you want so for demonstration purposes we're going to use this we're going to take this for data that is the id full name gender as well as class okay so let's do that uh, to start with we start with the labels so we go for this yes select this one yes. call it uh, can this either is double click sorry Either I click inside and then name it, or maybe you can select it and then come to the properties here yeah, and then change the caption to whatever you want. So it's already changed to label that is ID. So control C to copy, control sorry, control V to paste. Get a second one, which is for what? Uh, pull let me edit that here so that's. And select it. So I'll call this. Sorry, uh, should it be capital? Okay, full name, control C, control V to paste. I'll call this uh, gender, and then the last one. Uh, call it uh, at this class okay control it to copy control v to paste uh, perfect this should be for class okay you can change that as well here perfect so with these tools we have here 
you can use them to manipulate this particular labels here okay if you want to change the fonts you can just go to fonts and then you do that changes here i don't want to go deep into this though but okay let's manage it like that you want to go if you want to change the font style font size and then you do that perfect is changed so that is what you can do with those properties here uh, with a test online you can center them if you want they are centered if you don't want you can just move them towards uh, left back or right whatever mm, what else and then uh, go to special effects you can choose this and then see how or how or what how it tends to so if you want it this way too, you can leave it depending upon how you want it so you can leave it like that you don't want to make sure they are selected you can just select them like this you choose any of the there was the name sorry special effects here whatever you want to do you can just manipulate around that talk of colors you can choose the colors here and change the colors whatever you want this is for the background at least the border colors if you want to choose border colors or whatever i don't know so whatever you choose to do with it you can do that let's focus on the syntax okay because that is what we are here for so now we are done with our labels now we need our text boxes okay so we select this text box label then we just drag this give us the id so control c control v to this so we get that of the words full name control c control v then we get that of the words with the gender uh i wouldn't want a uh, as a name um, the gender is going to be what uh, an option button so let me just delete this okay let me just delete this and go for that is the option button okay so you just choose this you just adjust it a bit okay and you can name this to uh, the male and then control to control v then you can name this to what female okay effects so we have male here we have female here and then with a class i would want us to use uh, um as a name list okay so to do that let's quickly go to our sheets let's add another sheet here let's call it settings okay perfect so we can have some range here to get our classes so we can just have kg1 kg2 and then a p1 we can take p1 p2 through to p6 so perfect so you can just select this or if you like select this go this and then you can name it class okay you press enter now the range is set you should have this there so that is that so we would want to use a combo box here so select it and then we call on this okay let's just run it and see perfect but then our uh, let's just format it to go to the fonts we want to bold it from size to form perfectly let's run it once again why didn't you give it a background color the form so you click inside a user form you go to back color choose your preferred color here you go for this this is how the form is look, will look like if you decide to perfect so now we need to write the code to be able to take okay let's run it again we will take whatever data from here towards our 
database sheets but to do that let's quickly go and then rename or format our database sheet so you have here as well id we have here to full name then we have the full name we have what gender then we have class perfect so and adjust this and then open up this one as well and then class okay effects and just format this and give it times new man hold it and then center it can give it a background color i prefer this color font color should be some yellow through that perfect touch so now we can now go ahead take any data from here and store it here so that's what we want so to do that we need to get buttons to do that for us so we're going to assign or get our control buttons so let's start with that so we choose the first one here so we can uh, have this one why don't you okay let's put them here we can change the caption here we call it sorry add or save then sorry control c to copy control v to paste get another button that is a, a updates and then control c control v to paste we have deletes We have reset so control C to copy control V to paste. Reset control C to copy control V to paste. Then finally, we should have close. Okay. Perfect. So these are the buttons we need right now. Uh, in this tutorial after drawing the form and everything we're going to only work on the add button okay so the buttons we have to name them so that when we go back to our source codes our codes can be well structured and readable anyone at all that comes will be able to know what each and every line of code does so right now if i should just double click this you can see the name is what control button one what what does the control button one do what is it doing so we need to what, name it perfectly so we can go back there and do that if you want to switch through the source code and then the form this will give you the source code this will give you the form this source code form so you can switch through the two now we don't need this so we go to the form now now yes make sure this is selected then you go to the name so we choose we call the cmd Add. after that just press enter so now the name has changed so right now if i should just double click it you should know that cmd add it means it is used to what add data so you can see that it's readable perfect let's go back here call the cmd update we call this cmd delete Call the CMD reset. And call the CMD close. In this lesson, we're going to work with this one. That is the add and save. Okay. So now we need to work on the add button. So to start that, we just have to double click on the add button and then. We already have the sub procedure already created so ours is to just write the syntax in between be able to run our macros whenever we trigger or we click on the add button so first of all we're going to dimension or declare some two variables that is uh, x and y okay so let's just do that so i'll say dim x as uh, long okay i'll explain that <coughs> And I also see 
dim y as work shape. Perfect. I will just tap it over. Now, um, which one are we deeming as x and which one are we deeming as y? The x is going to hold the value, which is what the last row <clears throat> without the data. Okay, in it. So, supposing this is our data sheet, you see, we already have data in here. We already have data in here. Okay, let me just click clean. clean sorry, clear this for now. Suppose we already have data here, we already have data here. So the next row, which is row 4, is going to be assigned to what? X. And that is where data is going to be stored. You can't you can't store data where there is already where the, the, the data is already stored. Okay, you can only store data where there is no data, right? Good. So in this row, suppose we already have row data stored here, data stored here. So this will be the row without data, and then We'll assign this particular one to x. So supposing we already have data here and data here. So our x is going to be what? 4. And 4 is what? There's a number, an integer. And in this case, positive integer, right? So it can also be declared as what? Long. So that is that. <coughs> so that is x as long. Then we are deeming y as worksheet. Which of the worksheets? The database sheets, what we are talking about. Okay, so this one. So that we don't, we don't in, in our when writing the code, we don't repeat sheet one, sheet one, sheet one, but then we just summarize it using the word with. Okay, so that is that. So, what we are going to do is this first of all, we are going to assign uh, a value to what our what, uh, what's the name worksheet. Okay, we say whenever we team a worksheet, we need to what set it. So, we say what sorry, the set y, then we assign it to equal to what sheet. Uh, sheet what one which is what our database sheet so why you got what sheet one okay <clears throat> now we are also going to assign the last row with without data to what x so we just say what x equal to uh, y dot which is why i will explain that <clears throat> y dot what range y dot range into brackets then uh, we have a we can just add this like random numbers here and then you close the bracket dot what and okay i will give you another option to alternatively and uh dot end into brackets excellent okay you type it over then you close the bracket dot row okay you type it over plus one so with this one y dot range then the column which is what the column a to the last data supposing i have 9999 set of data will be taken so that is why i just specify this number okay dot nx allowable true so this line of code is going to hold the next row without with data and we can store data where there is data in this case so we add plus one so that this will move us to what the next row without data okay so one will be added to that so it will be moved to the next row without data so let me just explain this further to so understand it so with this when we run this line of code suppose we have data here and data here it will stop here okay but then we don't want it to store it whether so we don't want it to replace all the existing data we want it to store new data in the next line so it will add one to the thread to make it four and that will be the next row without data and then to store our data in there basically that is that so we have a size so we just add plus one to it and then we are done with that so perfect <clears throat> Now the next line of action is that we say what well, with now I want to begin writing to what taking the data from our what uh, text boxes here to the sheet now. So that's what we're going to do. So we say oh, sorry. So we say what with with what with sheet one okay or oh, with y we've already assigned. Okay, let me just explain this before I come to it. I said what x is equal to y dot range. Where is the y? Why, why? We already set y to be equal to what sheet one. So in this case, we are talking of y here. It means you're talking of what sheet one. So range A, that is a column A, where the data is going to be stored. And that is where our database, okay? So that is that. Now, in this, what we're going to say right now is we say what? With y, meaning with what? Sheet one, that is that, okay? We want to use the cell reference, the cells, the various cells on that row. What we want to refer. So we say what? The cells, sorry. 
dot cells into brackets <coughs> x comma one bracket close dot value equal to what <coughs> xbox one i'll explain that xbox box one okay dot text effects what we are saying is that when the next row without data is found now we want to start writing to that data so we say what on the cells which of the cells the first cell on that particular x okay the first one in the column one okay that is the a column the value there we have in this case we are talking of what this particular one because currently this is the row without data so this is our what x1 the x is what the row without data one is what the column okay so this is what we're talking about so this will be what x2 x3 x4 so take note of that okay x is the row this is one column two column three column and then a fourth column okay so that is what we're talking about we want to begin writing to this so here <clears throat> you say what dot cells on that particular m2 so what the first column the value there should be equal to what what is coming from text box one dot text so what is coming from text box one text? let's check on that let's confirm that please what is coming from text box one dot text so there's the id okay now let's run that and see something now if i should just type one here then i click on what save sorry so that is end with i said what before i need to say end with okay say what's and with perfect okay it should be okay now now so if i should run this now and type one here and i run this we should have one here okay so now we've gotten the value for that because we've already assigned now whatever is coming from text box one should be stored in what x1 okay rule x column one so that is it here this is rule x column two four. so b that will be what the full name so let's go and write that too <clears throat> so we just come and then do what we just copy this line okay <clears throat> now the next one is going to be what uh, if i'm right a uh, full name. so we just copy this one and close it to copy Show something there. Okay. Okay. Stop this. All right. So, let's just go now. Okay. So I'll just con control V to paste it. Okay. So I'll just edit it now. Now dot cells x2. So this the x is what the row without data. Okay. Now the column two where this full name is going to be stored. Okay. That will be the B column. The value that should be coming from what x box two dot text okay, so now if we should go back here sorry let me just clear this now now if we should go back here run this and type one type here kofi yao and run it we should have this and this okay so perfect we've got in the two now now we now move on to what third on which is what the gender and that is going to be stored in what column c so that would be what x array take note of that x array so let's go back <clears throat> so with that one we're going to use if statement because we have two options let's check on that first before we come back we have two options that is the gender either male or female okay so we need to use if statement to decide if this is chosen and that should be stored in that column but if this is chosen then this should rather be stored so let's check on how we can do that so you say what if <clears throat> if let's let's check on the names of the options and the buttons okay let's confirm that before we use them <clears throat> it's very important <clears throat> we name this as what opt1 this is what opt2 okay so let's go back we say what if opt1 okay dot value the value there we choose equal to what Ooh. then something should happen let me say and if perfect now what we are saying is that 
if opt1 dot value equal to two what it means is that if option one which is the male is selected we want to do something what do we want to do we want to say what just copy this now just need to copy <clears throat> control b we want to say what dot cells x what three that is the third column okay but value should be equal to what male because that is the male opt1 is what male dot value equal to what it's going to be a string so we say what male perfect that is that if opt1 that means what if opt1 dot value equal to two it means if option one is selected then the column x3 the value there should be equal to what male okay let's confirm that let's run that and see let me clear this for now let's check on that perfect now let's go back let's run this one jk then in so choose mail and then run it so this is mail here we have the id here name here and then agenda now let's try checking on this okay let's say we have two here we have a b here let's just female and see what's going to happen nothing will happen because we didn't specify that okay we didn't specify that of female so let's go and do that so we'll say what we just copy this if statement and then, and then we edit it control c to copy control v to so we say what if opt2 meaning option 2 dot value equal to true it means if the option 2 is rather selected in one the same column that is what the cells in what x3 the row x and then the column 3 the value there should be equal to what female okay so that add this now if we should let's go this way where the contents if we should go back here and run this now the two options should work now okay so one move on to the second column Ama, Kofi, then mail okay okay i'm a coffee safe i don't know so let's just choose that perfect it worked <clears throat> let's go to at the Kora yao okay email the ad is wet it, it's wet perfect so it means all is now working so now let's move on to the third option okay that happens to be the display this contents the third option happens to be the let's confirm here. Oh, sorry. The third option happens to be the class. Okay, perfect. So we move on to the class now. So now is is a combo box. Don't forget. And the name is what combo box one. Let's go back to our syntax writing. Okay. Let's just clear this. Don't want this. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> now with that one, we're going to say what. We just copy this yeah Maybe this is a dot cells now the wife sorry x4 dot value equal to what combo box what one okay dot text so you say what sorry combo box one dot what text perfect so now all should work now without any problem without any stress so let's run this and see we have one zina then female plus this and then up. so we have all the three options now working without any problem without any stress so now let's Let's clear this and rework on certain things, then we'll be good to go. So let's clear this for now. We clear content. Now you can see that all the functionalities are now working for art. All, all the various columns are now taken, all, all the various data as ID, full name, gender, and class is now taken. So let's look at the next line of action. Now, what we need to do is after submission of the data using the click on the, the add button, we want to receive what success message. Okay, we want to receive success message now how do we do that we just go and say message box right <clears throat> so let's go to say. So after all this i want to receive success message say what uh, okay. message box 
eh, dice bueno, did uh, <coughs> submitted successfully the effects okay this should work now so let's run it and see one blah 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 and it has submitted successfully perfect it worked now let's move on now we want to clear sorry after submission let's let's check on it again after submission of this so two we have blah 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 email this and that okay so you save it it doesn't mean after this you can see that the form is already still holding the previous data now we need to just auto clear it and then prepare it to take another input right let's do that so we go to the syntax now so what we are going to say is this we want to say unload me that is just a very simple phrase i'll put it that way it means close unload me closes the form okay so let's do that and see something and load me like i said and load me does what it closes the form so let me just confirm this for you and load me this will close the form but we don't want the form to just close and go permanently we want the form to just close and come back but before we do anything at all let's check on this before we proceed okay good let's confirm that here Let's run this. So we have the third person. This. That. Then let's run it. You see that after this, the form will close. The form has closed automatically. But we don't want it like that. We want it to prepare itself, empty the data, store it, and come back empty uh, or text boxes for us to input another data. So let's work on that. So after closing it, we have to what? reopen it. So we call on its name and use the dot show method and it will show again. So let's check on that. So you say what? The name of the form is what? User form one. Don't forget. So we will call it back. So you say what? Sorry. User form one dot show. Simple. Tab it over. So after this, it will close and come back again. Let's run it and see now. Effect. Let's submit another data. So we have uh, four. Type some random things here and then we choose this. Up chat. It closes and then emptied everything and came back. So it's now ready to take another one. Input. So unload me means what? Close. Then you want to call on the form again. You have to call its name and use the dot show method. And that is what will relax it again after closing it. Okay. So that is that now the next line of action is this now we want to what auto generate you know as we are doing all these things what we are going to doing is like we we'll always type our own numbers here, but we don't want it like that we want it that after typing the first number it should generate auto generate the second number for us so we only enter the full name gender and then the class then we save only that without have to and having to what type the numbers here ourselves so let's do that let's clear whatever we have here first okay so to do that let's go back to our syntax what we are going to do is just to double click inside the form here after double clicking we'll have this now we need to what initialize the form like to start it so you click here and say what initialize <coughs> what it means is that when the form closes and open again something should happen initialization means like starting initially the beginning at a point of closing and coming back you want to do something Form has to respond to some some functionalities. What do we want the form to do? Let's clear this. We want the form to do something for us. So we say what? And what? Where the number is going to be generated is going to be in the text box one, which is holding the ID. Okay. So we say what? Text box one. Let's just write that. Okay. Text box one. <coughs> equal to what application which application are we talking about sorry application we are talking of what the excel application okay dot we have something called worksheet function there is a function on the worksheet that is what we just call now and what is the name of that function dot what we call it max the maximum what does this maximum do it adds okay it increases something 
I want it to increase the number already there of that particular room. I want it to increase the number we already have, increase one to it to generate the, the next number for us. So we call on what is and all is going to happen, all is going to happen in what text box one. So we say what text box one equal to application dot worksheet function dot what max. Max means to increase. Where should the increment down? So into bracket, this should happen on what sheet one. So we say what sheet one dot this width. Is it any part of sheet one? No, the particular range. Which of the range? That is the range one. That is the A, the first column where we have the IV because that is where we're going to be adding and then we get in the next auto generate the next numbers. Okay, we say what dot range okay. into bracket. And the column is what <coughs> column A through to what A. Then <coughs> we close the bracket. We close the bracket again. And plus what one. Perfect. Now what we are saying is this. Supposing we already have one here. Right now we don't have anything here. So zero plus one is what? It's one. So right now here is zero. Let's check on. Let's check our syntax again. Now what we are saying is that text box one, which is holding our ID, we want to assign it to something anytime the form initializes. Okay. What we want to assign to it, we call on the application dot worksheet function, which is called the maximum. Okay. Application, which is the Excel. On that particular in the in the Excel workbook, we call on the what object what worksheet. There's a function on it we call what max. What does it do? It increases numbers. Okay, it increases something. Now we want it to increase something for us. Where should the increment that it should be done on what sheet one? Is it any part of sheet one? No, a particular range. So dot range, which of that range? A column, a through to what a that is what the first column where we have the ID. What should you do they always add plus one whenever the form initializes so right now there is nothing there if we should run it we should have what already one in our text box let's run it and see now so you can see we already have one now if i should add this you see one here two is automatically so it means one has been added to this one now two is generated if i should click two is also added now one has been added to a two now three is generated if i should click then that one has been added to three if i should click then the fourth one so that is how it is so this is the line of code that is in charge of that okay this one let's go over it again we call on what say text box one they want to assign it to do some it should be increasing whatever is inside if it is zero then increase one to add one to zero okay that would be one and that was what we saw if there is one add one to it making it to a two and that was what we saw and everything is working perfect so now <coughs> If we should, yes, let's minimize this and then clear this now. Let's clear the content here. Perfect. If we should go back and run this, sorry, run this form again. Now we already have one. The full name is what? La me, okay. Then the gender is what female class is what this. So if you should add, you receive this. So now ready to take the second person. It is going to be what maybe uh, Musa. Perfect male. Okay, class. You add and everything is working perfectly without any problem, without any stress. So that is that. We just retain. We just taking the data from here to the next one. Now, uh, let me just walk you through something. Let's assume you want to add, but please don't try that now, okay? When we are done, I'll be giving you an ass assignment. If you follow this story very well, you can create any complex form of your choice. So you have to relax. Let's take it step by step. Now, what is going to happen here is this. Uh, I wouldn't talk about it now. I just want to talk about how you can add another text box and how you can manipulate it. But let's wait. We'll do that as we move on. Now, the next thing I would want us to talk about is the now this particular <coughs> what's the name? Uh, what's the name? Uh, text box one. It, it can be edited, okay? But we don't want it like that. We don't want it edited. We want to maintain it like that. So what do we do? Let's go to it. Let's click inside it and go to uh, the properties here. Then we change enable to what force okay it means it 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 wouldn't be enabled if it's not enabled it can be edited let's run it and see 
you can see that you can't do anything to it now it's maintained like that so you can only move on to the next one because we don't want anyone to edit it because it's automatic it generates the numbers itself we have just done that so now what we need to do is to add another name so we say what well, aziz <coughs> okay mail last is this we add generate the next number so you can edit it it's maintained like that so that is that so i say thank you very much for watching and then our next lesson i say bye for now